Hello there, welcome to another video from Aeology. So in this video we want to uh, walk through the one of the notebooks uh, by Google Research about the stable diffusion and we just want to see how we can use that and what power it has and if we use one of our images what it would be look like and what we can do with it. So let's do it. The first thing we need to do is uh, we need to install diffusers. In their notebook they didn't mention that exactly what version. So if you do not install exact this version you will get some errors. So we will have this and then we need to install the OpenCV contribute and control net IUX uh, that has some some of the model for the control net. And also you will get some errors about the uh, CPU info so you need to install Pi CPU info to not have it. And also, I got some problem with Triton, uh, and I haven't installed it. And another one is the transformer utils. I need that transformer utils. So after having all of these library ready, uh, we can use the diffuser library for using diffusion model. So we can say diffusers import, and we want to have a stable diffusion control net pipeline so and also in diffuser we can use the pillow image loader but there is already already one in diffusers utils uh, import load image so we can load our images from here the load image uh, I want to load one of my image I have prepared it here as a JPEG file and I have it here so let me show you my image here. So basically what I have done is just installing some of the things. I didn't install them because I already done that. This is my image. And what we want to do is we want to apply some stable diffusion on it. Uh, based on the experiment I've done, if you pass a very low resolution image, sometimes it's uh, when, when you want to generate some image, it will say that you are creating some uh, I don't know, bad content or sometimes it get it uh, as a mistake about creating the adult scene, stuff like that. So the resolution should be uh, good. That model do not assume that you are creating bad stuff. So uh, for control net, we want to see the control net and diffusion. So I just want to show you some images. Uh, so it is really powerful for creating different stuff. Also, they, in their notebook, we will show you that how we can do that, uh, how, how we can see some of the coolest stuff and cool images there. But what I want to show you is the network. And this is the network. So This is the stable diffusion network. So we have some module of the diffusion encoding and then decoding. And this part is the control net. So uh, basically, it has different parts. We we have a prompt for text, so we have a clip model here for encoding the text uh, to some tokens, uh, and then we have an input image, and then we have another image as a control image, and that control image will help the diffusion that which part of this unit uh, this is very similar to the unit in the uh, stable diffusion, which part of this unit need to be uh, like when we have a scheduler on the diffusion, which part of this image should be focused on for generating the new image. So actually this diffusion encoder block get the uh, image from control net and that con uh, controlling the uh, level of details that can be changed by the diffusion model. So based on this, we have the first image. Now we need to create a control image. So the control image can be like the pose estimate of uh, my character here, or maybe it can be all of the details here. So just for simplicity, uh, like what Jupyter Notebook of Google Research they, they show, we can use the OpenCV for extracting some canny uh, edges. So I'm going to import image from below and also import numpy as np and i'm going to convert that image that i have already loaded 
to a NumPy image. I call it image NP. And here, what I want to do is I want to apply canny edge filters. I can say CV2 uh, canny and I pass the image. So I need to pass uh, I need to pass the NP image. So I need to pass two things, the lower threshold and higher threshold. I say 200 and 255 or maybe a little smaller range, 255 to 255. So it will create edges for this. Again, I want to convert it to uh, uh, RGB images. So what I can do is I say again concat uh, these three images. So I don't get the G and B, I just create it. And the axis should be 0, 1, 2 because the last channel is the channel of color. So just do not be confused with the image NP is NumPy and image is the Pluto. I just change anything here and I have to change all of this to image NP. Okay. So by having this, and now I can convert it back to pillow. So I have a uh, canny image and I can say image uh, from array of image NP. I just want to show you that how this image now look like. So by having that, okay, that cannot handle this. Okay, let's see where is the problem. Oh, oh sorry, uh, we didn't get this. So we need to say this is our image, yeah. So this is the whole detail that we want to say to the model. And when you want to generate, control this. This is for like these kinds of texture you made, this is really bad to have all of these details. It's better to have a less detail. So um, I'm not sure changing this can be helpful, but a little. I think that would be a good control image. So the next part, what we want to do is, now we have the image, we have the control. We need to uh, load the diffusion model. So we can say from diffuser, diffusers, import a stable, did we import the stable diffusion pipeline so far? Stable diffusion control net. So that was just for control net. We need to import the uh, stable diffusion control net pipeline. Yeah, we already have import that. So I can only say import torch. Uh, and I, sa I can say control net, that model that we have imported here, or we, we didn't have imported, so we need to import it once again. So we need to have the control net model too. So we have control net model. And what I can do is now I can say uh, that control net, I want to get from pre-trained, from hugging face, I want to get the version This one ST control net uh, for canny. So it is fine tuned. This control net is fine tuned that then we pass the canny uh, filter. So just to be sure that everything is correct, let me come here and check that. So there are there are many many uh, diffusion model there. So this one that we want to use is, to be sure, it is this one. So we will copy and paste it again to not have any typo. And uh, to have it a little faster, doesn't affect on the accuracy, we can say torch uh, D type is torch fallout 16. Now I need to have the import torch. And that's the control net, so I need to have it in one variable here. So just just to show you that the embedding is uh, using the cross attention block, stuff like that, very similar to what we have seen here. We don't need to go to the detail for this video, we just want to play around with that. And another one is the stable diffusion import that we used up here. Maybe I can, it's better to have this not there, but here. 
So now I can say, I want to create this pipeline, a stable diffusion pipeline. And why we use a pipeline? Because uh, there are different different things here. We want to have the a stable diffusion model. So uh, actually, I should say this one from Pretty Train. And here I need to have the model of the stable diffusion. And what I like to use now is this. Uh, runway stable diffusion v, uh, v1 dash 5. So we copy and paste this. And now we need to pass what is the control net? Control net is the control net that we have there. So this one was this one. And again, I like to have it in the torch D type of followed 16. And that would be the pipeline. So it has the stable diffusion, the main network, the another network for the controlling, and we can say this is the pipe. Oh, uh, my bad. So I have. Okay. So now we have the pipe ready. So when you when you do this, you will get about like 10 gigabytes model because you have uh, some stable diffusion model, have the control net, uh, the creep model. Everything is inside this pipeline. So uh, one of the other thing required for running stable diffusions is a scheduler. So a schedulers are a collection of diffusion model. When, when we have a diffusion pipeline, this is a collection of diffusion model. And a scheduler uh, try to schedule that how we want to run this diffusion model. So actually, it, uh, it will manage how many de denoising steps we need to take. Is the denoising is stochastic or deterministic? And what algorithm we need to use to find the denoise sample? So we have an image input and we go to the next um, step. So how many steps we need? And during each step, how we want to denoise? Uh, these are defined by the scheduler. And the scheduler in this case is really important. So uh, that's why we need to define a scheduler and based on the uh, Jupyter notebook, they mentioned uni TC multi step scheduler is the better approach because it is faster and you can get a good result. So, changing all of this is very important because in the Hugging Face documentation, they mentioned that there is no way to say which a scheduler is fit for a specific task. So it's better to test all of them. But for this uh, notebook, we only use this because it's also announced by the Google research as the a good scheduler here. So what I can say, I can say pipe, a scheduler should be this one. So I want to use this uni uh, PC multi uh, uni PC multi scheduler, and I want to say from configuration uh, pipe a scheduler. And I want to get that config. So that's another thing. So because there are lots of model here, uh, if we put all of the models inside the GPU, we will get out of memory GPU. But there is a, a method implemented in the pipeline. We can say enable model uh, CPU offload. So because we have multiple steps, like first we have the clip model, then we have the stable diffusion, we have the control net. It will automatically put the model, even each layer of the diffusion, it will apply that and then uh, put that model uh, to the CPU to free the GPU for the next way, uh, for the next step. So if you say like uh, device, like the model control net to CODA, I put everything in the quota, that, that would make the problem for you. But this line can be really beneficial uh, to not get the out of memory error. So I'm just running this part and it is okay. So another part which is important also is uh, we can use the uh, usual attention, but there is an XFormer by Facebook uh, research, meta research. And using that XFormer is not ON2, ON uh, in power of two complexity and we can do that faster. So for enabling that also we can say pipe enable 
X formers, uh, memory efficient, efficient attention. So it will enable that memory eff efficient attention for us. Now it is enabled. So the next part now is just to write the prompt and make the everything ready. So we have uh, our prompt and our prompt, I want to create like the demo uh, for images in a grid. So maybe it's better to have this definition of creating a image grid is just get the in number of images and how many row and column we have and just uh, return the grid and plot them. So uh, based on this, for each uh, grid, we will have one prompt, but all of them has something common. For example, I want to say, always return me best quality image, extremely, extremely detailed. And uh, for each prompt, we want to add something. So every time we want to add something to this current prompt. Okay. And we say for that T in, so now we can, for each image, we can have like four prompt here. Yeah. Because we are using that canny, I think that the good prompt, like saying in winter, just that, uh, because my image was taken in summer, we can say maybe in Mars. That would be interesting to see. Uh, what else I can say? Mm, let me think about it. Just just one important thing to say. Uh, in a, I don't know, in a Hollywood movie, as superhuman. I don't know that. Can it capture me as a human? Because uh, usually when we want to change that character, it's better to have a pose estimation. I don't know. This is just something I figured out. And in fall, I can say. Uh, these, these are my prompt. And what we want to do with this prompt, now we have the uh, whole prompt as a list. And we need to have the generator. So we have a generator. And that generator, it's a list of torch uh, generator and device is CPU. And I don't want to use the manual seed because every time I want to run it, I want to get a different result to see how it is. And what I want to do is I say for i in uh, for i in range length of the prompt I have. So what we are doing is creating four generator in CPU. And yeah, we don't have it any seed for it. Now we need to pass that generator, that prompt, that can image, control net, and uh, how many inference steps we want to do. Like uh, every in, in the diffusion model, how many inference we want to do for the denoising or for changing the uh, images. And for, for doing that, we get the output and we say pipe, get the prompt first and get that images. Uh, I call this yeah, canny image. So get this canny image and get the generator. And generator is the generator. And how many inference a step? we want to take. It is 20 in the original notebook. I use the same, but we can play with it. And there is another interesting point about negative prompt. Uh, recently also in ChatGPT, they are showing that how negative prompt can be effective. Uh, so negative prompt is like, I don't want to have any monochrome. Do not generate monochrome for me. Uh, or like, lovers or worse quality or low contrast uh, what else we can say low quality anything that we don't want to have quality or anything and that would be based on how many prompt we have so i can say repeat this list based on how many 
prompt we have. So that's it. Now we have the output. And output is the images. Uh, it, it has the images inside. So I can say, maybe I can do this here. I can say get the output and give me the images. So let me run this and then run this. So it will start to generate those uh, 20 images. I mean 20 step of inference. And it takes a little time. I have a GP on my machine, so it should not take that much time. Also, 20 maybe is huge, and also the resolution of image I have is huge. So let's see how it can perform. So uh, basically, we can play with all of these prompts here, with these negative prompts here. Uh, also, the number of steps we can pass. And another thing is this control net is uncanny, but there are some other control nets. So while it is running, we can maybe come back. Let's see, it said control net segmentation, control net normal, control net depth, control net open pose. So if you want to use pose, it's better to use the control net open pose. Uh, I don't know about all of them, but there are some examples. Yeah, a monochrome image with white edges. So that would be the canny, what we have used. We have a depth, so if we can depth estimation, we have HED, monochrome image with white soft edges. We have MLSD, that's interesting. Another one is normal, and it is a normal mapped image. The open pose, so, so it works only on the pose uh, position. So this, these are the different things on the control net. And Let's see, do we have an image? Yeah, so interesting. So this is on the winter, this is on Mars. Let's see why it is changing the whole thing. What is the next one? In a Hollywood movie as a superhuman. So this is in the Hollywood movie, I don't know why. And the last one is in fall. So it is changed the image drastically and it changed the whole, you know, it's got this texture somehow because my clothes are like this and it is cool that it can change it somehow is realistic like in winter it is really cool i don't know about these effects uh, maybe i can say extremely detailed not best quality realistic okay and i changed this to a little smaller to just finish it faster and of course this is just for canny I don't know if I change that to other thing and use the open pose, what will happen. But basically, if you want to uh, create that for a specific project, we need to fine tune the control uh, control net model, and also fine tune it on the prompt that we like to have. And let's see what it would be look like. So it, it was interesting, I wasn't able to like create a superhuman, maybe I should say what type of superhuman uh, in a Hollywood movie as a Spider-Man, for example, I will change that in the next run. Let's see what it is look like. Uh, so I changed that, I said make it more realistic, it didn't help. So it's like it's not getting that much. And one of the other things is I can change here is I add more details, like let's say from 50. So I will have lots of detail here. I don't know what will happen to it. So let's try this with this new. And also here I said Spider-Man. Let me let us see. I don't know how how many inference step is required. Uh, let's see what would be the result. Yeah, these are interesting from the hugging face. There are some examples here, like you have this image, you have this, and we can change the whole structure here to the new bag. Okay, so it is done. Let's see images. Okay, so interesting. Seems it's changing my hand position. Oh, cool. So 
seems like it can detect me as the human even if I'm not sending any pose estimation and it is changing me as a spider-man of course the image is not good that much but this is just an experiment and now those like lights effect here are gone and this is like walking in Mars and this is interesting so that's it I hope you enjoyed the video I uh, feel free to put any comment I will continue on the 10 minutes paper soon uh, please subscribe about 90% of you are not subscriber thank you so much and have fun